Hi, my name is Tomasz Golis. I've been working at IT Integra since 2009. I'm project manager and senior consultant, working mainly with companies that have multiple subsidiaries across the globe. I'm also responsible for development of our two enterprise add-ons. First is MDMS, Master Data Management System, and the second is Advanced in a Company. They help enterprise companies synchronize both data and documents between subsidiaries. If you're looking for a solution that helps you harmonize data between your NAV or Business Central companies and uh, you need to ensure the data consistency, this is solution for you. In this presentation, we'll go through basic setup of MDS, MDMS module. We will look at both basic and advanced features as well. Let's start out with a brief introduction to the general concept of uh, data synchronization between uh, master company and uh, subsidiaries. So, as you can see on this slide, our environment is split into central database and uh, a number of local databases. Um, the idea is that we have a designated database or company where the master, master data will be located. So all our uh, global settings and global uh, master cards will be placed in this separate database. This can be a separate database or a separate company. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we have a dedicated place where we keep track of all our master data records. So from the data such as items, drill accounts, customers' vendors, dimensions, any kind of data we, we like, uh, is pushed to local companies. All the master data is governed in master company and any changes to master records should be carried out in this company first because from there data will be pushed to local uh, companies. Additionally, in order to maintain data consistency, MDMS does not allow users working in local companies to adjust any global data. In master company, in central database, we might also introduce a separate workflow and uh, the idea is that only certain people like product department or uh, finance setup, rep people responsible for finance setup would be allowed to access this company and make changes, make adjustments, create new records and afterwards data will be pushed to local companies. All right, we are now going to show you MDMS uh, in action. First, let's start with uh, some basic concepts. Uh, the environment that we now have on the screen, this is a business central version 14 on-premise installation. Uh, and we will be showing you the, the, the module on the, on the web client. In this environment, uh, we have a couple of companies created. Let's have a look at them. Or Kronos International, it will serve as a master company, while Kronos Denmark, Sweden and UK will be receiving companies. For this demo purposes, all the companies are located in one uh, business central database. However, this is by no means a limitation. Each company can reside on a different environment, can be hosted in different location. So it's just for presentation purposes that they are now all located in one database. So Kronos International will be our master company. So we have two tabs opened here. One contains Kronos International, another one is 
Chronos Denmark, which will be our test receiver. So MDMS is now an uh, extension. It's an app file that you can uh, upload to your uh, environment or install directly from the app source, depending on where you are. Uh, installation is very simple. It's, it only takes a couple of clicks and then you're all good to go. After MDMS extension is installed, it automatically sets up a very important thing which is a web service. For those of you who are familiar with all the versions of uh, MDMS module, you might remember that the m this module used files as a transport layer. So every time we were running a replication, a file was generated. This is no longer the case in the uh, in extension-based version. Extension-based version is using web services to exchange data between master company and receiving companies. We only need to set up one object as a uh, web service. This is a special code unit with uh, all functions that we need to make sure that communication is up and running. And this code unit is installed and published automatically as a web service as soon as you install the extension. So no need to do anything manually, everything happens automatically as soon as you install an extension, a web service will be available here. Okay. Uh, next thing is that my user is now assigned an IT manager profile. MDMS adds following actions to this profile. So if you would like to have quick access to all the commonly used features of MDMS right away, you need to assign yourself an IT manager role. Okay, so that was a quick introduction in to basic concepts. Let's we will now move uh, on to module setup. So after we install an extension and uh, after we make sure that we have a web service available, uh, we can start setting up our companies. First, we'll start out with our master company. MDMS setup contains basic setup of the module. Uh, we need to make sure that we have following fields selected in master company. So first of all, we need to indicate that this is a master company. Then we can define whether we would like to block certain activities like delete and rename. Important thing is that whatever we set up here, it will only affect tables which we will synchronize. So we can uh, we can define a scope in a master company. We can define uh, tables that will be synchronized, and everything that we set up here on this screen will only affect those tables. Um, usually, in the past, we also we would also trigger this thing on. However, this is no longer the case because MDMS now supports delete actions as well. And we will talk about this a little bit later on. So these three fields are the most important and they define the core mm -hmm. scope of our functionalities. Uh, there are also two additional fields available which are more like advanced features. First is records per, per synchronization message. Default is zero, which is unlimited. Here, for this example, we have set up one. This drives um, how big the messages will be. Because when MDMS is pushing data using web services to receiving company, 
it creates a web service call. And this setup in here tells us how many records should be included per one synchronization message. Um, it might be important to remember about the setting when we are dealing with large data sets because, uh, well, in uh, Business Central we have a setting on the, on the service level uh, which is max message size. It is under SOAP settings and it defines how large our SOAP message can be. So it might be necessary to adjust this field in case of large data volumes. And last but not least, we need to specify whether we want our data to be automatically synchronized. We'll see it in action soon. So this is the MDMS setup. Uh, this is set up in, uh, in master company. Now let's have a look how it looks in our receiving company. In our receiving company, we actually no longer need to set up anything, right? So um, in the pre previous versions, there were some folders to be set up. In here, absolutely no setup is needed. An uh, important thing is that the MDMS setup record exists at all, because this is how we will realize whether we are currently located in master company or receiving company. But this record is initiated automatically as soon as the extension itself is installed, so no need to make any, any further actions in uh, here. So that was our MDMS set up. After we set it up, we can move on and uh, set up receivers. Receiver is a company that will, will, that will receive our data. In our example, we have two receivers created. After we open the page, this, these are the details. We just need a code or number, description, and then some um, technical details. Um, so the most important thing is this web services address. This is defining which service, which server, which service, and which company we will be pulling. And uh, you need to remember to follow this structure exactly. Then we also have to set up web services username and password. And important thing is that we at the moment only support basic authorization method. This is something that, uh, well, at the moment, this is the only authorization method supported by extensions. So um, we just need to make sure that on the servers that we are using to communicate that we have our web services running on, uh, we have NTLM authentication turned off. And this should be a service using NAV user password author authorization. So in our example, this is, uh, as we already mentioned, this is all located in the same database, in the same environment, but it, it can be a remote service. It will work as well if it is located somewhere else. So that was the receiver card. So right now in our master company, we have our receiving company set up. We can proceed to setting up the data that we want to synchronize. So in our demo, we already have a one data set created. What is a data set? Well, data set defines the structure of data that we would like to synchronize. So in a data set, we have a table and we have a number of policies. So we can say whether, oh, let's do it like that that what should happen if record already exists in a receiving company, by default it, uh, it's update, 
record level replication. It's a more advanced feature. Uh, this allows us to set up on a record level to which company it should be replicated to. Then we have disable local insert and disable local delete. This will drive whether uh, local users should be allowed to create or delete a record in this particular table. So we are also usually uh, turning it on. Block exclude filter. If we are dealing with uh, tables of a mixed nature, meaning that some of our data is considered global and some of the data is considered local, then we might need to set up a filter in here to indicate that records from a given from a given um, range should be allowed for to to be modified locally. Then we need to say whether we would like to run standard NAV trigger on insert and uh, modify actions. By default, it's a blank, but we can turn it on. And uh, yeah, target table number allows us to set up which table number we would like to replicate if this is different than the table in the master company. But it's usually the same number. So now that we have set up a table, we can dig into details. So here in data set line details screen, we can set up which fields we would like to replicate. We can use this wizard to add new fields. And similar to what we saw on a data set, we also have a couple of additional features to be set up in here, like what validate field. This indicates whether we would like field to be validated when it is being imported. Then disable local modify. This is very important because we usually want to have this one selected because um, we do not want local users to make any adjustments to the data that we have pushed from master data company. Processing order, this uh, might become useful when we have uh, when we combine this with validate field in some in, a, in some business central <laughs> in some business central tables it might be very important uh, in which order we are validating fields last but not least there are uh, two more advanced features like keep local value and skip export keep local value it well if it discovers that lo in, a, in the receiving company there is already a value in this field it will be kept there untouched and skip export sometimes if we are creating like a nested data sets it might be uh, useful to just skip certain fields from from the export but this is not commonly used. This is one of the advanced features. So usually what we should focus when setting up uh, data set fields is validate and disable local modify and that's it. And uh, let's now create a data set. So um, in our demo scenario, we would like to uh, set up a data set to publish dimensions. So we will create a new data set. We will call it dimension, dimension, and dimension value. It will contain two, two tables dimension and dimension value. Uh, we have now added both of them. We need to increase indent on the other one to manage relation. Right, so our dimension code will be linked to code from dimension table. Okay, good. We need to fill in the details. 
So we will add name, code, caption, folder, caption, and description. All right, and in dimension value. We will add name value type totaling blocked. Yeah, like that. Uh, we will disable local insert and delete from these tables. And uh, disable local modify on field level is enabled by default. So we can now release the data set. And that's it. So it is very straightforward task to create a data set to set up what kind of data we would like to have replicated. Okay, so now that we have created a data set, we can move on and maintain replication. So replication is setting up what data should be sent and where. So in our case, we have salespeople data replicated to Kronos mm, DK. So uh, each replication can be run in one or one of two modes. First mode is full. So it will take all the records that are available in the in the master company and publish them to receiving company. While incremental replication only takes only takes records that have been changed since last replication. Uh, synchronize is actually pushing records to receiving company and you might remember that we had um, on MDMS setup page we had an uh, auto-synchronize field and we are usually enabling it uh, by default meaning that every time we run the replication it will also push the records to receiving company. So each of these actions can be run manually or using job queue uh, so let's see, let's open up a list of salespeople in our master company. Okay, people in master company and in uh, receiving company, so it's the same now. So I will now add a new salesperson record in our master company. Okay, so new record has been created and master company. So we will now go to replications, we'll run it in full mode. Okay, it has finished. So we can see that it has now appeared in our receiving company. One more thing about the data, we saw that certain activities are blocked in local company. So I can uh, I can check what will happen if I try to change last name and commit the change. So after we type it in, we were we attempted to change the name field and the system has uh, recognize that this particular field is being replicated from master company. So it has displayed an error. So important thing is that I will never be able to change the value of a field that I have pushed from master company. So this is how we can maintain the data integrity between master company and uh, receiving companies. Okay, so now we have uh, already seen how to set up a data set, how to set up a replication, and uh, we will now have a look at one of the most important features that we have now introduced in the extensions version, which is our record delete handling. So Delete is a very specific action when it comes to distributed environment, which is an environment with one master company and multiple receiving companies, because in order to delete a record in master company, 
we should always ensure that it has been successfully deleted from local companies. So uh, since we are now using web services for data transport and every change, every replication is now immediate, we can, uh, we can employ the same functionality to remotely delete our record. So as we have just seen, we have created a new record in the says person table. And now let's open up a list in a master company. And uh, I will now try to delete this record. Let's say I made a mistake. I used the wrong code. And uh, luckily, says person purchase a table is not complex, meaning, well, there are no entries. I could not create or use this particular card yet. So I will now proceed and I will now delete it in master company. Okay, confirm. System discovers that this record belongs to a table that is replicated. So it will now try to delete this record in all companies it was sent to. Let's continue. Okay. What happened now? System has um, has issued a web service call to our Danish receiving company and uh, got back the result that record has been successfully deleted. Let's see if this really happened. Right, JD1 is no longer here in our receiving company. And if we go back to our master data company salespeople list, we can see that it is no longer here as well. So deleting process is an immediate action that first checks whether record has been successfully deleted in all local companies and only after it succeeds in all receiving companies, records will be deleted from master company as well. And this concludes our short demo of uh, MDMS module features. If you have any further questions, please visit our website.